Trevor. So you're a world championship bronze medalist, but a personal best here in the semifinals. I mean, everyone's going crazy. I mean, I had a feeling it was going to take like 48-1 to get in. But if you would have told me 48 hours ago that a 47-38, which is a top 20 time in world history, would have gotten me third in my heat in a semifinal, I'd have called you crazy. But I mean, it kind of just proves the point I said yesterday. This is the deepest event in track and field right now, bar none. I mean, Ryan, Allison going 47-1, 47-2, Carson 47-0, me and Clark 47-3. And there were people in the second heat, but I was a little tired, I don't remember. But yeah, it's incredible. Wednesday's gonna be insane. I enjoyed being a part of the fastest final, the second fastest final in championship history last year. And I think this year's gonna top that. It might even top the Olympic final. It doesn't help fast people are running right now. You drew late nine today. When you, when you, when you got that, what was your initial reaction? Um, that sucks. But I've gone lane eight, lane nine a lot. And I just gotta tell myself, last year I ran the fastest time in my life out of lane eight with nobody on my outside. So why can't I do it today? I did it today. As much as I hate being on an island, I tend to run fast there. So I'll be curious to see what I get tomorrow. With me being the second, the first little cue, so I'm not gonna be great. As long as it's not lane one, I'll do what I can. Lane two sucks, but there's no such, really no such thing as a bad lane in the World Championship final. So you just gotta find, adapt and make things work. So is there anything you need to change going into that final or that you'll tweak? I gotta stay a little bigger, cutting off a of hurdle eight. I kind of got in a weird space, stride pattern-wise. I had to take quick steps to get to go 14 and save me on 15. That kind of killed momentum. And that's a big reason why Clark was able to hold me off at the end. So I just got to be more conscious of that going into the final. I still think I can attack the first five better. It's just something that when you're out on that island, you don't really know where everyone else is at. Granted, you need to run your own race, but it's hard. Especially in a race that hurts that much, your body wants to like try and protect itself. But just knowing that Wednesday, we're going all out from the start, leaving all on the track. I told Lewis, if I have to die on the track to try to get a medal, that's what I'm gonna do. What's a successful final for you? Successful final walking away with a gold medal. Every time I step on the track, the goal is to win. Obviously, an event like this, it doesn't always happen. I've only won one 400 hurdle race this year in Botswana, but that's always the goal. Every time I step on the track, the plan is to win. Worst case scenario, I wanna leave with a medal. But at the end of the day, it's gonna take probably 46 mid to low to leave here with even a bronze medal. So that just shows the state of where the 400 hurdles is at, it's the golden age. And I'm blessed and happy to go say I'm a part of it. After the first round you said married, married life is going great. Now this time around you're saying you're ready to make your wife a widow? Like in order to like <laughs> I get think, a gold medal? I think <laughs> if we got a gold medal and turned Harley into a widow, I'd want her I'd want her to wear the medal at my funeral. <laughs> and let the get some pictures of our dog Mowgli wearing it. So I think I think she'd be on board, I think she'd understand. Can't stop that.